What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Um, so in the last video I kind of left off with most of the prep work done for going boost and I'm going to be picking up where I left off last video. So uh, it's been a bit of a long day at work. It is a Tuesday evening right now and I got my intercooler piping done up. I got everything taken care of. The only thing I'm missing now for that is just a two inch to two inch um, silicone straight piece for these for this flange here. Uh, let me kind of show you what I did. I, I welded all this up myself. Um, I am extremely new to TIG welding, let alone aluminum, and if, I don't know, I've been told aluminum is harder, so I'm gonna go with that excuse as well. But some of this looks like straight crap, some of it looks semi-decent. Uh, this piece in general came out bad. Um, yeah, so I've got the section here, goes down to the joint there, and then comes back behind the bumper. But my issue that I'm having now is that my bumper is not at all fit, so I don't really know. I, I've already trimmed out the bumper a whole bunch. So I'm not too sure what to do about that because the bumper can't really be trimmed anymore and I'm not, not going to run a bumper, you know, so I don't know. I might just have to cut some grooves or something and do it or try and like notch it out with the uh, like flapper disc or something, but yeah. So, and then I also modified my wastegate actuator. I have to take the turbo off here in a sec just to put the gaskets on anyway, so I'll show you that. I also made a wastegate flange at a 3 8 steel. So it's uh, coming together. So right now, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take the turbo off and get this bolted on, uh, get the gaskets bolted on, the drain flange I have to do yet, uh, oil filter sandwich plate I have to do, which I'm also gonna drain the oil quick. So that is the goal for this evening really quick is just drain the oil, get those gaskets, gaskets on, and then uh, call it a night and we'll pick it up in the morning. So with the turbo off, I had to, oh, I got a gasket on that too, so I didn't show that in the last video, I don't think. And I also got my V-band, so, um, so I can make my downpipe, so my two flanges, I only need the one, and my clamp. So, but yeah, I had to modify my wastegate actuator, so that way I could actually, uh, you know, get it to function, because I had to clock the turbo, it was already maxed out, so this is what I came up with, me and my coworker. Uh, this was some scrap steel that we had a, that one of our other coworkers had cut from before, this little skull guy, but I think it looks cool. And it works, so that way, you know, it does, it, it functions. I mean, it's functionable. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart really quick, and I don't know if I showed you guys in the last video, but I had to make my own little tool to uh, put these bolts on, so I just took part of a uh, Allen head, or Allen key, and just welded it to this bolt, because I needed to be able to fit it in here, so. Works just like that. Works good, fits in all of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this part, slap these gaskets on, tighten it back up. So turbos are uh, all good now. Um, once I get the wastegate gasket in the mail, that I'll just smack that on. That's only two bolts, so uh, that is good to go. I'm gonna slap this back on the car, and uh, it got dark pretty darn quick because I did not realize how long it was gonna take me to do all these bolts since they're so tight, and I have to wrench it one little turn at a time. So let's pick this up in the morning, shall we? Next day now, and I'm having uh, not a good time so far. It's almost noon, I've gotten no work done because I've been driving around all morning. Had to go out to Bufu, Egypt to go pick up a uh, two inch to two inch silicone coupler so that way I could attach the last of my charge pipe. And then while I was out, I also tried picking up a gasket for the drain pan because, or for the drain bung, because the one that was sent with my flange did not fit. This one really does not fit, but I, had, I just trimmed up a little bit to like elongate the bolt holes. So we'll see if it even holds. If it doesn't, then I'm gonna just put like 10 pounds of Honda Bond on there and hope for the best. Um, but my issue now is that I spent all morning trying to find the snap ring or the retaining ring, whatever you wanna call it, 
um, for the blow-off valve. I found the gasket. I just bought a bunch of gasket O-rings from Harbor Freight, like a 300 count pack for like eight bucks, and I had the right one in there. And yeah, the snap ring I tried. Ace Hardware, Napa, O'Reilly's, AutoZone, Shopper Supply, Tractor Supply, Harbor Freight, Lowe's, and Home Depot, and nobody, and I mean nobody, carries these rings. So I'm probably gonna have to go ahead and order the stupid ring and gasket kit off of Amazon. It's like 15 bucks. I just didn't want to pay 15 bucks and wait a week for shipping for a snap ring. So really, really frustrated that today so far, but I'm getting the intercooler piping scooted up right now. Um, and I'm gonna have to order another two inch clamp. I don't know, a smaller clamp, but that's not too big of a deal. I might even have one at work or something. Um, but yeah, so finish up the blow off valve and then I'm gonna get to draining the oil. So here is the uh, piping now. Again, I need the two clamps for right here, but yeah, this is how it's all routed now. And then it comes around through here, and then into the intercooler, and then bring it around over here, where it comes up to this 90, and then through here, and into the intake. So that's all good. Now, now I can stop worrying about that, worry about just finding two clamps and then getting the stupid snap ring for this and uh, that'll be good. But as for now, intercooler piping is completely good to go, intercoolers mounted up pretty solid, it's all, it's pretty good on there. So now I'm going to start uh, draining the oil, find my oil pan somewhere and uh, get that drained out. The oil pan is off. Uh, I gotta clean it up really good. That way I can, you know, drill into it. Well, I guess it wouldn't make sense to clean it beforehand, but I'm still gonna clean it beforehand so that way it's, you know, not so messy and easier to weld on. I'm gonna have to grind this spot off on the inside, and then I'm gonna end up welding it a bit on the, I'm sorry, the outside, and I'll weld a little on the inside um, to make sure it really seals because I have to get it up nice and high. So I got a trash bag over the sump and, you know, the bottom of the block right now, so I'm not worried about debris getting in there. But uh, yeah, pretty much from what I understand, I have to have this as high up uh, as I can without interfering with the bolts. So I'm probably gonna have to end up putting it around here. Um, and obviously that means I won't be able to weld too well on the top of it, so that's where welding on the inside comes in. So try and get as much of a bead around it as I can, and then the inside as well to really seal it up. And uh, yeah, it should be pretty easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my flapper disc and get to cleaning this. Just like Young Static did in his uh, one of his older videos, I just did the inside because I know just from welding every day that 
obviously you have to have a clean surface on the back side too because of penetration and whatnot and having this paint or powder coat or whatever this is on the inside wouldn't allow for that penetration. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use a step bit uh, if you don't know what those are. This one's a little beat up, but it should get the job done. And then I uh, just drill it out big enough to where it's good enough for this. So the bung is all welded on. It was really hard to get up in there, so hopefully that holds. Um, hopefully I got enough around the seal. But the rest of it isn't too bad. It was just a little hard to weld because my eld my uh, my welder's been acting up. I think I mostly fixed it. I had changed wire size and I forgot, so I had to like switch my wheel around. But now I just think I had my settings all thrown off. So it is what it is. It's uh, it's on there. So. Got the gasket material all cleaned up off the edge of the oil pan, so I'm going to go ahead and clean it out with some more brake cleaner and such. And then, uh, if you guys didn't already know, these nylon wire wheels are really good uh, for removing that type of stuff without eating away at the actual uh, metal. Because I know normal wire wheels tend to chew away at it and can scratch it and cause leaks and stuff, so this is a good non-abrasive alternative. But I'm going to get this cleaned up. I don't have the gasket right now. I'm going to have to wait a couple days till I get paid to do that. Um, but I mean it's not like I'm gonna be able to add oil for a bit anyway, so uh, It'll be good to just sit. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back up though So I at least have something covering the bottom of the block um, It was the trash bag because I could blow away, but yeah clean this up slap this on just hand tight and uh, move on to the oil uh, line which I'm gonna have to go ahead and order another 90 fitting here, so I'll cut it to the length that I need and then um, just go pick up another fitting local. I think full race sells them when I get paid and I'll just uh, go grab one of those Couldn't really film this part just because it's really cramped in there and I don't have the space So I got the sandwich filter on I got to finish snugging it up and put the oil filter back on because this is a brand new filter It's got like 150 miles on it and I'm running my feed line I'm gonna have to have the feed line remade so that way this end is a 90 fitting But this is more or less a routing that I think I'm gonna go with um, So obviously follows it up here goes under all the hosing there comes back and goes down between the two runners into the top of the sandwich filter or uh, sandwich plate so I think that should be good uh, the oil line or the, the drain line obviously that's not how it's gonna be I just need to get another 90 so that way I can tuck it up I just didn't want any uh, anything getting in either of the ports so I just put that hose on and so I don't lose it but yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and snug up the oil filter sandwich plate and then uh, redo the Honda Bond on my VTAC feed line because it's got a little bit of a leak. Uh, and then after that, depending on how, how hot it is or what time it is because this day is already going pretty quick, it's almost 3 o'clock. 
might have to call this an early video or something. It's just hard because I didn't get much done today since I've spent so much time driving and it's really hot out. But um, yeah, once this oil stuff is hooked up, then after that, really all I gotta do is um, wrap the manifold, exhaust downpipe. I got my radiator, FedEx came a few minutes ago, so I gotta take that to work and weld the water line flange on it and then yeah, just do the water lines and then just finish bolting everything back together and that's it. So I know you guys can't see it, but I was able to, I found my leaky fitting back there where my uh, line for my VTEC feed or whatever, uh, I had a T fitting back there with an oil sensor on it and it just, it was leaking for a while now. So I just went ahead and took that old sensor off since it didn't go to anything. It wasn't the stock sensor, like the oil pressure sensor. It was an old oil pressure gauge that eBay cheapy that didn't work, but I just kept it in there and it stopped the leak um, or to prevent like having an open hole. So I closed the hole with one of the fittings that came with a sandwich plate. I uh, got that all sealed up, threw some Honda Bond on all the threads, cleaned it up, reattached the VTEC uh, oil line. So now, one last thing before I go ahead and end this video is I'm gonna try and shave down the bumper a little bit more to clear the intercooler piping. Um, there's a chance I may actually have to cut it out. So I more or less just kinda scribbled in this section here about that tall, try and flatten that section out. And more or less the same thing here um, so this section up and we'll see if I can't use the flapper disc and take that down a bit and get the bumper to sit more flush. If worse comes to worse, I'll just cut that section out and expose some of the piping. That is ugly, but it's better than running no front bumper. Well, the bumper is on. It's pretty tight. I had to end up trimming a little bit more here. I accidentally nicked the pipe. It'll be okay. It didn't go through. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's all bolted up. All the bolts went in, minus this one, because I think that one's stripped or rusted. But yeah, it might need a little bit more clearancing, but I already started to poke through right there, so I don't know. It should be all right. It's just plastic, so it's not like it's gonna eat through the intercooler pipe if it is vibrating on it. But I'll find out when I start the car for sure. Um, I did mock up my radiator just now. So what I did find is uh, because of this, the wastegate actuator, that is what's in the way. I have to end up doing is screwing the radiator over like a half inch. I'm gonna have to cut this off and then just reattach it just slightly over. And uh, that'll, that won't be an issue, that's easy. Um, and then I just have to notch. So cut this little section out here and then notch right here. Um, I'll mark it once I go to mock it up again later this weekend, but it'll be really easy. I'm not gonna cut through this, just, yeah, just, just give it a good notching so that way the radiator will fit. And that will take care of that issue. Uh, anyways guys, I'm gonna end this video here. I'm dying of heat stroke out here. It is really hot. Got quite a bit done today. Not nearly as much as I would have liked to, but I, you know, gotta work with what I got. And uh, right now, I was kind of short on a snap ring and some line and some fittings. So, and money, definitely money. So, anyways guys, if you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Uh, so follow me on Instagram if you don't already to kind of get a little bit behind the scenes because I've been pretty bad. When I get really into a project like this, I really tend to fall behind on videos. Not that I don't film. Um, but I don't edit so I end up just sitting on videos and yeah getting a lot of work done And then I'm like two weeks ahead of my videos or something so uh, Follow me on Instagram at Chris Dasky for more behind-the-scenes stuff. Anyways, uh, that's it I'm getting out of here. I'm gonna go hydrate up cool off do what you love for you about the rest See you in the next one. Peace